Please, wait, you have the floor. Okay, now I have I have the floor. Yes, go okay. ahead. Okay. Again, good morning from the Philippines. I am Dr. Mary Antoinette Tremonte, working at Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. So my my short presentation is about uh, Phil Health. Uh, Quest for Universal Healthcare and our coverage for people living with HIV, one of our benefit package. So PhilHealth was created in 1995 to implement the National Health Insurance Program. And our mandate is to implement universal health coverage for all Filipinos. Next slide. This slide illustrates our uh, our uh, journey towards universal health care as uh, regarding our uh, regulations or uh, law. When we were established in uh, 1995, we, our mandate was to uh, to administer the national health insurance program, but there were limitations in the law. Hence, in 2004. It was revised to allow us to cover other services such as rehabilitative care, mental disorders. It also strengthened the implementation of the program by giving more uh, room for pill health to, uh, to, to uh, cover additional health services, including maternity care, uh, maternity care benefits. Then in 2013, the law was again revised to give a focus on the coverage of the poor and align it with the anti-poverty pro program of the government through the uh, conditional cap task. This time, the poor was enrolled with the national government and the premium uh, was uh, directly sponsored by the national government through an annual uh, budget. This slide explains our relationship with our main stakeholders, our members and their families, and the providers. So the members uh, will, be, uh, will be paying their premium in health, and in turn, we give them health insurance coverage. Also, we accredit providers in behalf of our members, so we check their qualifications, and if they fit, if they qualify, we give them application. Such that when our members need uh, services, they go to our accredited providers, and in turn, we pay the providers for uh, health services. So, who are I will give me. Um, the first, uh, uh, the first uh, surface of the UHQ, the population coverage. So before we only have formal, informal, sponsored, and lifetime members, but the law in, in 2013 created another type of members, the, the sponsored members this time, or the indigent members rather, which are the poor enrolled by, by the national government and identified through a specific tool as uh, really belonging to the uh, uh, poorest of the poor sector of our society. Then another law was also passed to give uh, privilege to our senior citizen. And one of the privilege is to be enrolled to fill health. Uh, the premium was sponsored by, again, the national government through uh, from the syntax collection. So we another we have another member of uh, or type of member which are senior citizens. Then uh, these are our legal dependents, so children who are below 21 years old, legal spouse, parents, and a uh, disabled child. So regarding our population coverage, as of 2016 or even 2017, it, our estimated coverage. Uh, is 91% of the population. 
and this uh, table would show uh, how many are actually principal members, how many are dependents. And I, adding them together would be the total beneficiaries of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. So these are, are our number of, or our membership over or the beneficiaries over the years. As you can see in 2013, we created or there is a, not, a separate uh, membership type, the senior citizens, and then we also have the indigents uh, separated from the sponsor, so that's the red, and that's now the uh, more more of our uh, beneficiaries. As, and also, as you can see, uh, the in the informal sector, rather, which is a uh, uh, challenge to cover uh, for us, have been uh, dec uh, decreasing because of uh, well, for those who cannot pay their premium, we pay if they were sponsored, and also for those who have uh, who are employed, uh, they were considered employed sector because there is, a, uh, again, uh, some laws that uh, could see, that give benefits to those uh, employed but, low in, but, but with low income, such as our uh, household help, and, uh, and also the drivers were now considered former sector. So now, these are our uh, coverage in terms of uh, population. Now, I will go to the field health benefits. Historically, uh, to uh, PhilHealth started, when PhilHealth started, it only covers uh, inpatient admissions because it, has, it is a takeoff from a, from a Medicare program that covers formal sector OB. But gradually, uh, we gradually increase our coverage of benefits such that we also have uh, outpatient benefits as well as uh, special benefits or what we call catastrophic or Z benefits. Included in our outpatient benefits is uh, the outpatient HIV AIDS treatment package. Okay. For inpatient benefits, we cover medical and surgical cases in our accredited hospitals, primary care facilities, and infirmaries. So these are the facilities that admit patients. So we cover room and board, drugs, and also the professional fee. And uh, our payment mechanism is we use a case-based payment, which is a fixed rate for different types of cases. So it depends on the case. Uh, we pay a, fi uh, a fixed rate. Then we also have our, our outpatient benefits, such as day surgeries hemodialysis and then our primary care benefits which is for now uh, focused on the our indigent and sponsored members but later this year will help will already expand it to uh, also our uh, other sectors of our other members member category so the primary care benefit is uh, somewhat uh, different because we pay through capitation or per family who that were enrolled or registered in a rural health unit or outpatient section of government hospitals. So these are the coverage of primary care benefit, which is mostly focused on uh, screening and primary prevention. Now, these benefits are also somewhat special because uh, they were uh, given an uh, emphasis uh, during when the uh, Philippines uh, gave its commitment uh, to MDG. So one of the benefits here includes uh, outpatient HIV treatment package, which I will discuss following this. So now we also have a uh, TB treatment. We also cover outpatient TB treatment, also outpatient uh, malaria. Then uh, we have uh, we cover maternity care package if, if they were even provided in non-hospital facilities such as uh, birthing homes. 
Now I will go to outpatient HIV AIDS treatment package. So actually, outpatient HIV AIDS treatment package or OHAT is also a case-based payment. Uh, however, we you pay it uh, in uh, for uh, 150 per quarter. So our uh, qualification is it, it's uh, the patient should be a confirmed HIV to our centralized and confirmatory center, and it already needs antiretroviral treatment. So these categories were based on the latest guidelines uh, prescribed by our Ministry of Health. Our providers are accredited facilities that are recognized by the Department of Health as treatment hub. Now our special our then also so for for this package, the facilities are not allowed to have um, billing for our indigent uh, patients. So there should be no out of pocket, no additional uh, payment for our indigent uh, members. We pay the facility directly, and uh, there's no what we call uh, direct uh, reimbursement by the patient. So how do we engage our providers for uh, HIV AIDS treatment package? There is no separate accreditation program for gigs. Once uh, our accredited, usually we started in hospitals, are were uh, determined or recognized by the Ministry of Health as treatment hub for HIV. And the, the facility may or may, or may just be uh, submit uh, additional paper for us, and we will already include them as providers qualified to provide and reimburse HIV-AIDS treatment package. But this will change soon because there were already hubs that are only catering to PL HIV. They are not hospitals, they are not uh, birthing homes, or they are just uh, put up to specific for PL HIV. And we are finding ways to engage these facilities also. Okay, this slide will show our the number of our accredited uh, facilities which have a potential to be a treatment hub. When we started in 2010, there were only 13 treatment hubs in the country recognized by the Ministry of Health. So these are mostly hospitals. But in 2015, they were starting to recognize also non-hospital facilities such as a primary care facility, TB clinics. So we all, if they are already accredited, we also include them as uh, as our as providers. So gradually we increase uh, the number of facilities which uh, our members will access the benefit. So if, uh, as of this uh, quarter. Uh, we already engage uh, 55 uh, accredited facility as also uh, accredited to provide outpatient HIV AIDS treatment. So now, how about utilization? This would, this um, slide show the number of claims we received for uh, the span of uh, four years. Um, the our AIDS registry would uh, indicate that there are 24,000 already uh, PNHIV on antiretroviral treatment. But as you can see, our our claims uh, showed 43,000. What because these are claims? As you as I said before, we pay the outpatient HIV AIDS package per quarter. So in a year. There should be uh, four claims for one uh, eligible member. And uh, of, in the span of four years, these, uh, these are our reimbursement. Uh, I converted it in dollars. No, so for 2017, we have already paid uh, $6.5 million for the uh, outpatient HIV 
package. Now, as the, the challenges in implementing this uh, program is still one, uh, access to facilities. Because uh, there are uh, every month more and more patients were diagnosed and are started on ART. And we are still have only have 55 uh, accredited facilities to treat us. There will also have issues on confidentiality, such that these, uh, uh, the concern of patients on confidentiality is, uh, uh, is uh, impeding them to access our benefits because they do not want to be disclosed. So they rather be uh, treating on their own. Uh, and uh, not uh, covered by it. Uh, then uh, also with the standardization of health services that each patient would see, a uh, different treatment hubs would have uh, uh, different uh, health uh, items that they will charge to our patients. Which that first off, uh, viral load is free for others, it's the uh, blood exam and CD. So we're having, uh, because of our policy that gives room for the hub to, to manage the our reimbursement, yeah, the, there is now, there is, we have now a battery issues on what the health, what health services teach. Uh, then also, we. We see that uh, despite the increased number of gain and, number, and amount of and uh, it remains underutilized because some patients could only be able to put in once or twice in a year at uh, four times. As we move forward, as I said, we will uh, now. Um, we will now start, or we will, we are about to start engaging the standalone treatment hub so that uh, people living with HIV will or will be able to access uh, HIV and other communities. Then uh, we have to uh, to study how to be more explicit in our policy on what services the treatment hub should provide and what our uh, benefits should be covered such that our uh, LHIV will be more informed. We heard earlier from UNH country director um, saying specifically feeling that um, stigma and discrimination was also a key barrier to services. Do you feel this is something that's also uh, maybe prohibitive in the Philippine instance? Can you hear me? Okay, could you repeat? The sure. Question, Do you feel that stigma and discrimination experienced by the community may be a barrier for community and accessing services in the Philippine setting? Uh, yes, indeed. It's their fear of uh, stigma and communication that prevent them from accessing care to uh, facilities and even uh, accessing our uh, benefits. So before they do not want uh, the, they do not want to submit some forms for uh, for the reimbursement. So we had we made some uh, actions to facilitate this. But yes, indeed, fear of discrimination is uh, is a barrier for them. And also for not people with HIV, uh, I think it's lack of information and maybe uh, we need we need to desensitize our uh, general population on the. On the on H, uh, regarding HIV, so that it will be uh, just a mainstream to us with other uh, diseases. All right. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Any specific questions in relation to the Philippine insurance system? If not, maybe I have one final question for you, Doctor Hen. You touched upon the syntax. The syntax. Yes. I'm wondering if you could explain a little bit because I think that the syntax is quite unique within the Philippines and maybe it's something that other countries could perhaps consider to actually replicate. Okay. Uh, in 20, yeah, 2013, I think, 
uh, government issued a law that will uh, add a tax test to cigarettes and alcoholic beverages. And the proceeds from that collection is uh, allocated for enrollment of the poor, of the senior citizen, to field health. Part of that, or, and then um, also part of that is allocated for medical assistance program. So that's the main uh, pros the, that's the main uh, allocation of the SINTAS, aside from the amount allocated to help our farmers. So because of that SINTAS, we were able, the government was able to enroll more uh, members to build health, including not just the first quintile, but also the next uh, quintile in the, and also, of course, uh, the senior citizen. So that's our uh, that's the effect of symptoms. Uh, then some part of that also were allocated to improve the health facilities. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. I think we really appreciate you being online. And you know, if you have the opportunity during the rest of the day, please log into our online streaming. There may be questions that come up during the day for you also for the for the Philippine team when we break out to look more into the specifics of how the community better advocate for inclusion into the UHC and, and what, what are the entry points. So appreciate your being online. Very thankful that the IT works. Thank you and uh, hope to meet you in person next time. Thank you very much.